Our guest today is the personification of beauty with brains. But mind you, there's more to her than just the pretty face. Meet Subecha Paul, breaking the stereotype by joining mechanical engineering, becoming the topper of the batch, publishing numerous research papers, cracking Tata Steel and now going to Stanford University for her masters, you'll never find a girl this calm in chaos. And today, we'll talk about what it's like to break stereotypes and how exactly did she get selected in Stanford. So let's begin. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks, how do you feel breaking the stereotype that mechanical engineering is not for girls? Well, first of all, I feel that I am not the one who broke the stereotype. Like there have been so many women before me. Like even if you see the first mechanical engineer who came out of our college, who graduated from our college was such a long time ago. That is why I feel like I'm not the one breaking the stereotype. But yeah, I have had my fair share of discriminations, I would say. But uh, to that, I would say, I mean, you know, I always this Josa counseling part when we were doing it. There was no requirement about whether you're a girl or you're a boy regarding your uh, graduation. Like, so that is why I was like, to the naysayers, I'm eligible as equally as eligible as a boy for mechanical engineering. So why not? Like I said before. Just like you said before, why not? So let's move ahead to our second question. I want to know that how did you crack GRE and TOEFL? What was the exam pattern, difficulty level? When did you start? How did you prepare? Yeah. What are the helpful responses, coachings, essays? Mm-hmm. And what was the selection criteria? So, like, first of all, the exam pattern, I will speak on because GRE and TOEFL exam patterns is, like, widely given on the internet. Just go and just search. And the official ETS site tells you all about it. As far as the difficulty level is concerned, for GRE and TOEFL, the English is the only part. For TOEFL, the English is okay. If you come from an English medium school, TOEFL English should be pretty easy for you. Two weeks of preparations is all that it needs. The GR, the English is difficult for GRE. So when you're taking your GRE, I spent three months like learning up words, and I used different books. I did not like go for coaching centers as much. So I used books like Math Found LB, the official ETS, uh, uh, verbal reasoning, and once uh, also. And also, like, parents, 800 essential words. These books really help. Uh, we can mention these in the description below so that people who really need this can find it there. And yeah, yeah. I, I think I already covered when did I start and preparation is concerned. You know, GRE is some of, is kind of that exam that you don't need to study mm-hmm. for, like, seven hours, eight hours a day, but you probably need to spend two to three hours on it three days, like, depending on your vocabulary strength or your personal knowledge. You know, GRE or TOEFL are not one of those exams like GATE, like we have in India where you have a selection criteria. Mm-hmm. That if you're targeting good universities, anything above 323 plus is a really good. Okay, so what advice would you give to someone who is, you know, willing to give the exam, no idea where to start and is in like third or fourth year? What advice would you give them? Firstly, go on the internet, just type GRE and you will probably get exam that like the exam pattern and also i would ask them to buy the Man- manhattan five pound lb book because that's like a really nice book because they have a test in the beginning where they assess your level so you get to know that where what is your current position and then there are tests at the end of the book that help you to understand also the- are there any like mock tests so that you can find out you know where do you stand I among your competitors yeah like uh the book itself has one of those mock tests at the beginning and a few mock tests at the end that help you assess yourself available online. ETS itself, like the uh, CRE portal that where you have to book your test, it itself offers you three free tests. Also, there's my question that is it worth all the money to study abroad? It depends on you because... It depends on a lot of factors. The kind of college or university you're going to. Can Do you have the same quality of education available at your own country? Then, yeah, probably going abroad. If yes, then probably going abroad is not for you. But if you feel like there is something more I want to learn, that you want to grasp, that is like essential for your, uh, uh, you know, understanding and for whatever ambition you have, then yes, definitely it's worth it. It's worth all the money. Awesome. 
Awesome. That is all I wanted to know about GRE and TOEFL. Now let's move to the next. How do you do it? What LORs and all of that? It's a mess. I have no idea about it. So please explain. First of all, like this question is, what is the process of getting shortlisted by university? So by that you probably mean, how do you get admitted to a university, right? Yeah, precisely. Okay. So uh, basically, first of all, you work on your SOP. You work on your GPA. You try to keep it as high as possible. And thirdly, get stellar recommended letters of recommendations. Like approach professors who really know you well, or like who have taught you a lot of courses, or maybe you interned under them. Now, if the professor is affiliated to the university that you're applying to, then that is, again, what I would say. I mean, like, maybe he has collaborated with a professor at a particular university that you want to apply to, or he might be a visiting lecturer or guest lecturer there. Make it sound as fantastic as possible. Like, you're the best person in the world for that, for that spot. I remember you, you were like, please give me some mechanical puns. <laughs> Because I am the guy when you think about puns, yeah, and I gave yeah. like a few. And did you did you also like mention them in your uh, application no. or whatever? So you see, when you write like, your SOP, sometimes passionate about it and so like emotional about it that it becomes a bit cheesy. And when I included those puns, my seniors told me that it was like it's not what you're going for. So. Uh, of course, I did not include them. I made them a bit more formal. But I use puns like uh, say a closer was giving way under pressure. So I wrote a line like amidst the chaos, it was hard to say who were more stressed, the enclosure or us. You know, Hydrostatic uh, stress. I feel and, I uh, feel very sad. I feel like I wasted <laughs> two uh, hours uh, of my life <laughs> finding mechanical puns. Also, yeah. if you have any question, you can ping Subetsa on the uh, social media handles. I have written them. I have, you know, spent a lot of time, worked hard. My friend Ayush here is doing a really great job of reaching out to people and others in his own possible way. So please like, share and subscribe to his channel and keep flowing.